Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a bracelet today and I'm going to use some of the things that came in the most recent bargain bead box, the one for December 2023. It's called the Sparkling Snowfall Collection. I'll put a link in the corner of this video and in the description box below to the unboxing video I did for this subscription where I go over everything that came in the box. I have a coupon code, it's Teresa2, and I'll put it on the screen here and in the description box below, along with a link to the page to sign up for the subscription if you're interested. The coupon will save you $2 off your first box if you sign up. Uh, I've already got one bracelet made here, and I'm going to make another one a lot like it. Uh, in this one, I used the 8mm London Blue Agate beads here with bead cap, the bead caps that came in the box on them, around them. Uh, I spaced all the beads out with the 3mm Appetite faceted round beads that came in the box. And I have a few of the 6mm Crackle Agate Frosted beads that came in the box in here. And I used some of this Azure Blue Leather that I got in my recent Bead Box Bargains haul that I did a video on a few videos ago. I thought it went well with those beads. And I've got a ring here that I had in my stash. And I've dangled off the ring one of the snowflake charms. I put one of the snowflake beads on a ball head pin and did a wire wrap loop and hung that off as a dangle. And then I used one of the frosted, 6mm frosted beads with the 3mm uh, appetite, faceted appetite beads on either side of it and put it on a ball head pin and made a dangle out of it. And then I've got a little button there. It's a little snow flower or snow <laughs> sunflower I think is what it is sunflower so I'm gonna make another one a whole lot like that I'm using the eight millimeter uh, London blue agate beads and here I've got the 14 by eight and a half millimeter crystal faceted twist beads I've got three of those and here I've got the six millimeter a couple of the six millimeter moonstone glass beads and here I've got another button a different button and another ring just like this in that bracelet and the other snowflake charm another one of the snowflake beads one of the little six millimeter moonstone beads uh, a couple of ball head pins to put the snowflake on in the moonstone bead and make them into a dangle I've got some uh, jump rings, a couple of wire guardians, and a couple of 2x2 two two crimp tubes. And I've got my tube here that I'm going to use to try to make a barrel knot. I'm not very good at making barrel knots. I've not <laughs> made very many. But I'm going to try to make one. I made one here. And I'm going to try to make one for this one. I've got the bead caps that came in the box. I've got some uh, silver or kind of gray looking. I'm not really sure what the color are, are on these. Uh, 11 OC beads that I'm going to space the beads out with. I've got my GS Hypo Cement. I've got a piece of my leather that I'm going to use. I've got my bead stopper. I've got my soft flex beading wire and fine. This is 21 strand. And it's satin silver is the color, but you can use whatever bead string wire you have. I'll be using my chain nose pliers, my round nose pliers, my tweezer pliers, both pairs of my bent chain nose pliers, both pairs of my crimping pliers, and both pairs of my cutters. And I've got my scissors to cut my leather with. And I've got my little New Orleans shot glass to put my wires in. When I cut them off, he's going to be, he's getting full. I got to empty him. <laughs> I think that's everything. I'll put links to everything I can find links for in the description box below. So hold on and I'll get some of my beads out of the way here. And I'm going to do this, uh, try to make this barrel knot first. I like to do that first because that way I know how long that part of it is and I know how long to make the rest of my bracelet so I'm gonna I'll get this stuff out of the way and I'll be back okay I've got my stuff here to make my barrel knot now I've got about a 12 inch piece of leather and I know that's way too much but uh, like I said I've not, never made very many barrel knots I'm not very good at it so I need I just wanted to have plenty I'm gonna put my leather through my ring here and I'm gonna leave I'm going to make one piece of leather a little bit longer than the other piece. Kind of like that. And I'm going to make sure my longer piece of leather is on top. And 
And I'm going to take this tube here. And I've seen people make these without a tube, without anything, just wrapping one piece of leather over the other. But I need the help of this tube. <laughs> uh, you could probably use something, anything that's hollow, like maybe a piece of a drinking straw or something. So I'm going to take my longer piece of leather. And I'm going to wrap it around my tube. And then I'm going to just keep wrapping it around my tube, wrapping toward me, or toward my hand, which is what I find to be the hardest part of this, is wrapping toward my hand. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my, this piece of my leather and feed it back through my barrel. Or my, through my little tube bead here. Take that out. I'm going to hold on to my wraps that I've made so that they don't get out of control. That they all stay next to each other. And then I'm going to real gently pull on this piece of leather. The one that I, the, the one that was the longest one that I did my wraps with. Just going to really slowly and gently pull it down. Try to keep my wraps next to each other and pretty. Keep pulling on it to get it close to my ring. I'm going to pull on both pieces of leather here. That one piece is really not going anywhere, but uh, I don't really know which at this point which piece is which piece, so I'm pulling on both of them. I'm going to try to get those set next to each other. I'm pretty there. I'm going to just keep pulling on my leather to tighten everything up. So I think that's probably about the best barrel knot I'm going to make, so... <laughs> I think I'll have to be satisfied with that. Now I'm going to take my button here and see where I need to make my other knot so that my button will go through my loop. And I'm just going to do an overhand knot here because I tried to make a barrel knot on this end with that other one and it's it will still slide. No matter how much glue I put on it, it would still slide. So I'm just going to make, and I don't want it to slide and come out, so I'm going to make just an overhand knot with my leather here. Said I had too much leather, I might not have had enough. I don't know. I'm just gonna make an overhand knot here, pull it up tight, tighten, just tighten each piece of leather. I usually take my pliers to help me. Pull it and tighten it. Before I get it too tight, I'm going to test my button here and see if it'll go through. It'll go through, but I think it needs a little bit more room, so I'm going to pull this knot down a little bit more, down this way, to give it a little more room. And then I'm going to tighten my knot again, test my button again, well, I can get my button through there, I wouldn't all thumbs here, yeah, I think that's good, so I'm going to try to keep my knot there, and really, really tighten my leather now. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to take my GS Hypo Cement and I'm going to put some glue on this knot. And I'm going to put some glue down here on my barrel knot. I don't really know that that's necessary since it's down here at this end. I don't think it's going to be going anywhere or coming loose, but I usually put a little on there anyway. And now I'm going to try to put the lid back on this GS Hypo cement, which is not always easy. But that, hmm, pretty easy that time. And now I'm going to set this aside and let it dry while I string up my bracelet. So hold on, I'll get my beads that I'm going to make for my bracelet or use for my bracelet and I'll be back. Okay, I've got my beads out here that I'm going to use for my bracelet and I've got a stopper on here and I've just left my bead string wire attached to the spool. I always do that if I know what my pattern is going to be because I kind of think it helps that I don't waste as much wire that way. So I'm going to start with a bead cap, an 8 millimeter bead, bead cap, an 11 0 bead cap, 8 millimeter bead, bead cap, 11 0 bead cap, 8 millimeter bead, bead cap, 11 0 one of my Moonstone beads, 11-0, one of my Twist beads, 11-0, another Twist bead, 11-0, another Twist bead, 11-0, For my moonstone beads, eleven O B cap, eight millimeter bead, B cap, eleven O. Bead cap, eight millimeter bead, bead cap, eleven O, bead cap, eight millimeter bead, and a bead cap. So that's what I've got. So now I'm going to get my crimp beads and wire guardians and I'll crimp it. I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to crimp this now. Uh, zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to take my crimp tube, put it on my wire, take my wire guardian, <coughs> go up one channel of my wire guardian, go down the other channel of my wire guardian. through my crimp tube. I'll make sure to hold my wires apart so they don't get crossed in there. I'm going to take my crimping pliers. That just keeps wanting to turn around on me there. I'm going to tuck my little wire guard in a little bit. Pull my wires apart. Now I'm going to go on the part of the crimping pliers that has that tooth. I'm going to lay the tooth on top. I'm going to squeeze. And that puts each wire in its own little 
channel there. Now I'm going to go into the, there's three half circles on each side there. I'm going to go into the middle one. That's the one for the two by two crimp tubes. I'm going to lay my crimp tube in there and squeeze. I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to take my cutters. Cut off my extra wire. And push all this down and cut it off my spool. crimp tube and put it on here. My other wire guardian. Tuck, tuck in the little wire guardian. I'm going to go down the other channel of my wire guardian. through my crimp tube. Pull my wire through and I try to go through a bead on this side to get my hands out of the way because it's harder to crimp on this side because everything's in the way. get through all the the beads and the bead cap. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to hold on to my wire, uh, wire guardian, make sure my wire is not crossed. Pull it through. <clears throat> now I want to make sure there's no slack in my piece, but I don't want it to be too tight either. If it's too tight, it'll be all stiff and won't won't drape well. So now I'm going to take the crimping pliers and go in that part with the tooth again. Lay the tooth on top. Squeeze. Now I'm going to turn it and go in the parts with the half circle again. Squeeze. Fold my crimp and get it good and tight in there. And now I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to cut off my extra wire. Okay, so now I'm going to get my other findings put together. I'll be back. Okay, I've got my button here, and I'm going to take a jump ring. And my pliers, and open up my jump ring. my bracelet and my button and now I'm going to close up my jump ring make sure to get it closed really well I'm going to take a jump ring open it up put it on this end 
attach my ring. It has my piece of leather on it. I'm going to bring it back real well. Okay, now I'm going to cut this leather down here now. So that's what I got now. Now I'm gonna make some little dangles to go on my ring here. So I got a ball head pin. I take my moonstone bead. Go to the very tip of the pliers. Make a 90 degree bend over the pliers. Come around those pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Around those pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. Take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this wire down a little bit. Take my other pair of bent chain those pliers and start to wrap. Make sure you get that first wrap in under the bottom of the loop, not over the top of the bottom of the loop. And just wrap till there's no more room to wrap. Well, I keep trying to pick a piece of wire up and it won't go. Won't let me pick it up. I'm going to take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. And these are a different pair of cutters than I use for my bead stringy wire. You don't want to use the same pair of cutters for your head pins and eye pins and craft wire that you do for your bead stringy wire. It'll really mess up your cutters that you use for your bead stringy wire. And I can't seem to get in there to cut that. There we go. I take these crimping pliers and I use the little half circles at the end there to tuck in the burr where that's left when I cut off wire. And I left too big a burr that time. <laughs> Didn't cut it off close enough. There we go. Now I tuck in my burr. I'm going to do the same thing with my snowflake bead here. I'm going to put it on my head pin. Go to the very tip of the pliers, bend over at a 90 degree angle. Come around those pliers, put them in the crook of the bend. Around those pliers facing me, bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. And I bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this wire down. My other pair of bent chain those pliers and start to wrap. Just wrap until there's no more room to wrap. my cutters, cut off my extra wire, take my crimping pliers and tuck in my little burr, Take my pliers and take a, another jump ring. Open up 
open up my jump ring. And I'm going to put my little snowflake charm on here. And put it on my ring. Close my jump ring back really well. another jump ring open it up put my little moonstone dangle I've made here put it on my ring close that up really well Another jump ring. Open it up. Put a little snowflake on here. Put it on my ring. Close it up really well. So I'm all done. Together here. There's my little bracelet with the button and loop closure, some little dangles. I'm not on the camera here. <laughs> Hold on, let me get both of them out here and get everything cleaned up here and I'll be back. Okay, there's my bracelets made with the latest bargain bead box, the Sparkling Snowfall Collection. Uh, this one is smaller than this one. Uh, when I made this one the first time, it came out longer than I meant for it to. It came out to be about eight inches. So I made this one smaller. It's about seven and a half inches. Uh, these are some beautiful beads. I really think this is a, I really do believe this to be a very good value box. I'm always able to get many, many pieces of jewelry out of it. I've still got a ton of beads left, of course. I uh, thought I'd make a couple of bracelets. I'm always making necklaces. I don't make very many bracelets and earrings, so I thought I'd make a couple of bracelets this time. Uh, like I said, if you're not subscribed to the Bargain Bee Box and you decide you want to be, that coupon code will save you $2 off your first box if you sign up. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry and I also sell gift cards and some extra beads that I have. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.